um, call last week, we talked about expansion. And contraction, right? The market moves like this, and you're end up calling this low and calling this a high and calling this a low. And then sometimes the price, you know, super expands. Then we have an imbalance. Then we have consolidation to a retracement, and that goes all the way back up, right? So the market moves in expansion and consolidation. So are the expansions is uptrend and downtrend or always sideways? And I know this seems basic, but I'm telling you guys, if you don't stick to the basics and just, I like to use the word be humble, then it's going to be complicated because people learn like one little schematic or something and they start running around like a crazy person with it and they're not getting results because they're just trying to label every up and down. Like we still have to understand basic um, Forex. Now this right here, um, I would tell you guys how to draw it out. So I'll do it with you. And what we're going to talk about here, there's three types of trends, right? Long-term, mid-term, short-term, and intraday. So although that's true, this is how we're going to have this discussion. So <clears throat> generally speaking, from this point, okay, pretend this is our trading view. From this low to this high, the red line, that would be our range, okay? Because this would be the bottom, and this would be the high. So generally that can be our trading range and then you can say slash long-term trend. But I want us to look at it different than just like calling this a trend. I want to know, I want you guys to know how to use it. And that's kind of what the point of this call is to know how to use this information instead of just calling this a trend. So this is like your trading range. Now, as you see here, you have your midterm trend, right? So for us, that's going to be your structure. So that's going to be acknowledging just your smaller highs and lows to make sure we're still climbing that ladder. So midterm slash structure. I should have changed the color. That would have been smart to change the color. Okay, now your short-term trend. Um, your short-term trend and your intraday, I'm just going to draw it the same, is where you're actually going to see the schematics build. Okay, so let's just say that this is clearly up structure. Okay, so at this point in the schematic, we have two lower lows, lower highs, and two higher highs. So that means we're in an uptrend. So if we pretend that we have, so this is normal. So this right here, the structure would be its own mini range, <clears throat> right? And then we have a pullback, let's say 50%, and we have an unhealthy, um, we have a point of interest, right? So with that point of interest, we would go down into the point of interest, and then we would fill this gap, okay? So once we fill that gap, we might get a whole schematic, right? And then after the schematic, we're gonna get a break of structure right here. And then we're gonna pull back off of that and then keep going. So drop a two if that makes sense. Okay, so you can call this um, slash schematics, short-term intraday schematics, because this is where you're gonna find a schematic. So <laughs> whatever way you wanna put that in your notes, you can put that. Okay, so something like short-term trend you could say that could be like a higher time frame schematic, so like 30 plus, and um, anything lower, you know, would be like your 15 minute schematics. Okay, drop twos if that makes sense. So that's how you really interpret that, right? And then, so if we get this new low, we didn't change structure yet, right? Until we get two more new lows, okay? So at this point, we're changing trend. So we're gonna look for a sell, obviously. However, with that big trend range, until we break like maybe the major low, we're still could be in higher time frame up structure. 
So if we have a POI down here, we have to be aware of it, but at the same time, still willing to sell a POI into here. So maybe distro and then see if market structure changes in here, or at least make this our take profit. Okay, so hopefully you guys can read this in a whole different way now to make that make sense. Okay, so speed, and I'll tell you guys what this means to me. So all these things I'm gonna talk about is pretty much confirmation. So we realistically, we can't put all 50 confirmations in a confirmation checklist, but it's still something to acknowledge. So if you wanna make it like after today's call, if you wanna make these notes into like a secondary confirmation list that has less weight, you can do that because everything is a confirmation, but it's just about <laughs> pretty much doing the best you can with the information you have and knowing what's a priority and what's not and just a level of certainty, right? So when it comes to speed, um, what I use this for, when, or let's just say what I acknowledge speed would be when price is coming to my point of interest. Well, especially if it's like counter trend. So let's say, Uh, this would be pro trend unless let's just say the higher time frame was like this okay and then this is obviously a POI a whole point of interest okay so these are the times where I'm going to acknowledge speed so I prefer to come into a point in uh, the point of interest at normal speed and prefer to have a schematic to be built, obviously. So once we start seeing price slow down and get three drives up, that's when we're calling this buying climax, you tad, et cetera, right? So this is pretty much normal movement. And I'll clear this because why did I write over the picture? <laughs> right? But if I see something like this, that I'm going to be more hesitant, that's going to build a schematic. One, if this is a buying climax, well, then in order to get three more drives up, it would have to go higher. Therefore, it's not respecting the point of interest. Okay. So there is times where price will just come in, tap and go, and that's completely normal. And if you have a schematic over here, your entry can just be a tap and go. When I say tap and go, price goes in and goes out. But if you're waiting for a schematic to build because you don't have a schematic, then you need to get in with normal speed because it should be obviously giving your highs and your lows. Okay, so what it says right here is higher the speed, actually higher speed to the right equals strength of the trend. Okay, so it pretty much means the strength of the trend. So if we're in a downtrend and you're getting this into your point of interest <clears throat> and it's really fast, it might be going to a higher point of interest. So it might plow through where if it's going up in a normal motion, then you might, you know, getting weakness once you get to the fill, okay? So this is where we have to fill, but we're in like a down structure, right? We leave in balance here and we have to come collect it. So coming to collect, you know, we're filling all these um, imbalances as we go. So price is slowing down and it's just top and then just go back to where it wants to go. Okay, but if we get it, you know, with lots of speed, then it might just go like this. That could be because one, it filled something you need to fill that you didn't recognize, or it's just what price wants to do. Cause there's always higher imbalances and lower imbalances and all that stuff, right? So your speed is just gonna kind of show you, or for example, if you have two points of interest, uh, you want to pay attention to that. So you have to read the candles. And again, I feel like sometimes we forget the basics, like actually read the candles and see what they're doing, right?